Howdy do guys, it's AJ again, and before we get started in some real Java programming because we learned how to download Eclipse, we have to go over some severe basics as these terms will be referenced a lot in Java programming and I want to make sure you guys know them. But let's do it and get started. Today we are going to be covering objects, what they are, what a class is, what methods are, what variables are, and I will show Eclipse for some quick tips on how to make things a little more easier and readable. Starting off with objects. An, ob an object oriented programming is essential, you know what an object is. It is a repository of data that contains states and behaviors. But you didn't need me to tell you that, you could just read it. An example would be a microwave has a state. It can be on and off, and behaviors such as turning the light on inside, um, rotating the turntable if it has one, cooking popcorn. And when you think of it, you can kind of... Ah, Jesus, what is this? Okay, so when you think of it, you can kind of describe anything. Is that a lamp can be on or off, maybe heating up or something like that. And kind of everything on Earth can somehow be described in this state as long as you have the right mindset. An iPhone can be on or off. Or a girl can be hot or not. Or a guy can be tall or short or something like that. And you will see there was another thing... There is another term for these states and behaviors that we will get to in a few slides. Continuing on objects, we know that each object each objects know each class and uses methods to change them. The method is what I refer to as the behaviors of the object. It can perform actions on the object and change it internally or act upon the object to do something. Just as I said, methods for maybe a microwave object would be to cook the popcorn, um, turn on the light, or cook a bagel. Um, funny story, I actually, I go to Virginia Tech and I live in a dorm and I was cooking a bagel at 2 a.m. and I set off the fire alarm and everyone was very mad at me because it was 2 a.m. Why does this keep on coming up? Jesus. Um, but as you can see, there are also states, which also can be described by variables, which we'll get into in a few slides. And now, now we get into classes. Since we know what an object is, a class is what defines the object. It's the type of the object. And right here you can see in this block, you see that I have a public class microwave. And don't worry about what public is yet, but this is how you would create a class which inside defines a microwave object. Now this is the proper syntax for making a class. I can name a class anything I want. Most often, I'm sorry I see a mistake here, you name a class with a capital letter and if there's two words you would have um, the second word be capital O so you can tell that it's two words but in this case it's not. And so inside these parentheses or brackets you would have all these states and behaviors that you'd want to act upon that object which would be defined in the class. Classes and objects are kind of interchangeable. Now what I was saying about the behaviors in each class that act upon an object are defined as methods. And they are defined as a function that operates on an object or a class. Um, such a method that you use at use a lot of times in your life I'll get back to that after this, is add. But when you add two numbers, and this is a proper um, syntax function in Java to add, but as you know, in, in add, you would need, you need two, two parameters as a bit. You need two things to be able to add things. You need to be able to add something to another thing. So you would need an, one integer and another integer, for instance. So this is a, this is an actual method that would compile in Java. We'll get to compiling later. And what it does is this, don't worry about public again, is that int is what kind of variable, what the method returns. So it returns an int, which is short for integer. And it takes in a parameter, which always must be in the parentheses separated by a comma, of two integers. And so x plus y, and then it will return the addition of these two. It, the plus is an operator, which in math you should be pretty easy to pick up. 
And that would return to me what the addition of those two numbers are. Integers, if you didn't know, are any number from negative infinity to positive infinity, zero included, that don't have fractions. So negative one, zero, four, one, two, three, and one billion, as long as there's no decimal, you can do that. Um, as we saw in the in the methods thing, in the method slide, we got introduced to variables, which are things that store data. But make sure you declare them and specify their type. For instance, here I declare an integer x to be equal to 5. If I just said x is equal to 5, Java would give me an error and because it does not know what type it is. These are just three types I'm going to outline here. An integer is, again, what I went over any any non-fractional number, including zero. A double is a fractional number, as here I can have a decimal spot 3.214, and again I have to say equals. I, I will come back to equals later, but you shouldn't think of equals as like in math an equal statement because it's more of an assignment operation. You can also write, I can also write in x equals x plus one if I define, if it knew what x was, if I knew what x was earlier, I could say x int x equals 5 and then the if I got rid of this the new x would be equal to 6 now because of plus 1 even though in mathematical terms this would not be correct so you want to think of equals more as a assignment operator but I'll be sure to show you the ins and outs of that later and a character as you see here again if I took away the f I would get a error but if I need to give it a variable to assign the data to so it's so the it stores the character C in the available food, which it allocates the memory for. Moving on to another thing in variables, variables can also store a reference to objects. I have got to stop that, guys. I'm sorry. And what these, what I mean by this is that when you create a primitive type which is an integer or a double, that is not referencing, referencing an object or a character. And there are others too. It is not referencing an object. That is a primitive type and thus it, the, when you change the primitive value such as the int or the double, it is being changed within the same box. But when you create an object variable, you are creating a variable that points to the object. As you see here, a string is an object. And so the string, I'm creating a variable word and referencing it to the first string. And a string is just um, text. So I could put anything in here. You're allowed to put numbers in here as long as they're contained in the quotes. And the word, the word variable is referencing the actual object. And so this arrow is very important as I could change it if I wanted to, to point towards another string object by use of other assignments. This is very important as we'll see later, but make this is usually found in common beginner Java Coast test questions as this is very important to understand. Now we're going to look do some little eclipse. Here I've been programming in Python, but we're going to go away from that now. Now you may notice that first of all, you may see a lot of things different from your eclipse than mine, and that's okay. But I believe one thing you will not have is these numbers on the side. And we really want these numbers on the side. So to make sure you guys have these, I believe you were going to go to, we're going to click on Window, go to Preferences, and go to, hmm, I hope I can figure this out, guys. I'm going to go to Java. I'm going to go to... Okay, we go to we go to general, we go to oh jeez. We go to general, we go to editors, we go to text editors, and we click this and we want to click show line number. If you click that off, if you click and I have it on already, but you want to click that on, I believe click apply. I think you can just click OK anyway, and now we'll have the numbers in. And getting rid of this, I'll explain what that is later. We have our first class. This is how you declare one. Again, I have this one called testing, and we'll go over it exactly how to create a Java folder, which I have a lot of right here, but simply, if you want to create your first Java folder, you can click new Java project, 
And if it's not automatically here, as you can see, I have a Java project and an Android project for making Android applications. You can go to other and it should be somewhere in this folder if you go to Java and it will be right here under Java project. And I'm not going to make one. I'll make one for the next story, but I'll take you through the process and you can name it anything you want. I can name it this and notice it has a workspace defined for me, which you should already have in your computer and you can define which version you want but don't mess with that and then if you have a name you click finish and that would create it for you but and if you want to you can start with that we're going to start programming a little bit in the next tutorial and to finish off um, if you like remember to subscribe and follow me on Apple Juice Teach if you like what I see my name's AJ and the funny story behind Apple Juice is because when I was a kid my parents I always used to say Apple Juice and so that's why my parents named me Apple AJ because I always said apple juice, apple juice, apple juice, apple juice. I hope you guys like that fun story. I hope to try to get a bit more or maybe you don't care at all. See you guys later. Thank you. Please subscribe.